Welcome back, everyone, to another short sermon. Now, in case if you haven't noticed, this sermon begins the third quarter of our sermons. Today is Saturday, January 16th, 2021. Um, this is the third quarter of the sermons. And this is going to begin a whole other series of sermons called The Ten Commandments, Part 1. And today we're going to talk about the First Commandment, because the Ten Commandments are very important. Before we can read about the other laws, we have to learn the First Ten Commandments. Alright, if you cannot keep all of the other four hundred laws talked about in Leviticus, at least memorize the first ten commandments. Now, the key verse is in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3, but I'm going to read the first three verses of this chapter. This chapter contains the ten commandments, and it begins... Then God spoke all these words to Moses. Okay, Moses was on the Mount Sinai. Okay, this is the mountain where God gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Now, he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the place of slavery or bondage okay so moses led the israelites out of the land of egypt which was the place of bondage they were here for 400 years under the a pharaoh and how did he do it with miraculous signs there were 10 plagues that affected the Egyptians um, while the Israelites stayed safe the Israelites were separated from the Egyptians uh, I heard a pastor talk about this and guess what um, we're separated from the rest of the world because we are safe in the church and only blessings come in the church and so while all of these people in the world are being affected by the plague we are not. We are protected. Now, he led them out by parting the Red Sea. The Israelites were allowed to cross the Red Sea. And when after they did, the Egyptians came after them. And the waters closed on them. And they drowned. So that is what happened. Actually, Archaeologists have found some Dead Sea Scrolls in the Red Sea as proof of scripture. I think they even found some horse chariots. So scripture is real. These are not children's stories. These are real life events. Alright? Now, the first commandment Verse 3 says, Do not have other gods besides me. This is the homeless translation. It can also be said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, what is a god? Well, if you've been reading your Bible, if you've been reading one chapter per day, Right now, you will be on chapter 17. So, you're reading about Abraham. Now, if we go back to Noah, um, Noah and his family were the only people who observed God. All the rest of the people perished. Now, Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And this is interesting to note because all of us come from Noah, because everyone else drowned. All of us come from Noah, but which son do we come from? Exactly, and I'll tell you. 
In the old world, there were only three continents. There was Europe, Asia, and Africa. Europe was on the west. Asia was at the east. Africa was at the south. Now, the people from Europe probably came from Japheth. And these are the people who come from Indo-European. These were the ancestors of the English language that we speak today. So we probably came from Japheth. Um, the people of Asia came from Sham. I think so. And the Israelites came from Sham. Alright. Um, I think he was the oldest. Now, the people of Africa came from Ham. That is why we see a lot of black people in Africa. You know, African Americans, they came from Ham. So, the Israelites came from Ham. Now, that is just the prehistory of what happened before the Israelites received the Ten Commandments. If you look at a timeline, I think the Israelites receive the Ten Commandments. Um, maybe 2000 BC, 2500 BC, something like that. Okay, so they were the first six days of creation. We already experienced the two days of chaos. Um, the first 2000 years of mankind without the law. Those were the years of chaos. Not until 2,000 years later after Adam did the law came into existence. And you gotta figure, the law only existed because there was sin. If there was no sin, there would be no law. Okay? Even with the law, the people still sinned. But I'll just tell you this. The Israelites were much better at keeping the law than we are today. You think, oh, the Israelites rebelled against the Lord at some times. No, they actually did much better than we would have. You think they complained. We would have complained even more so than they did. I believe the Israelites back in Bible times handled the situation much better than we could today. Okay? So the law came into ex existence and it lasted for another 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. These were the third and fourth days. Now, ten commandments were given to Moses before God mentioned all of the other commandments in the book of Leviticus. Alright, and God wrote these ten commandments with his finger in Hebrew on two stone tablets. Alright? And we have two hands. So Moses probably carried each of these, you know, one stone tablet on one hand and the other tablet on the other hand. Okay? And we have five fingers on each hand. So, there could have been five commandments on each stone tablet. There was the first five commandments. And then there was the latter five commandments. Now, the division here is that the first five commandments refer to those who are in authority. The first five commandments refer to those who are over us in authority. The latter five commandments, commandments six to ten, offer those who are not in authority. But they are with us. They are not over us. They are just with us. Okay, so that is the division of these commandments. Now, you know it's very painful to have one of your fingers cut off? That's how painful it is when you reject one of God's Ten Commandments. And if you hit one of your fingers with a hammer, your whole body is in pain. Not just that one finger. In the same way, when you break one of the Ten Commandments, you broken all of them. Because the person 
For example, who is going to obey the fourth commandment, keep the Sabbath, is most likely going to obey all the other commandments. Why? Because he loves God. The reason why he is obeying the fourth commandment to observe the Sabbath is because he loves God. And in that way, he's going to obey all the commandments. However, if one does not obey the Sabbath, um, then he's probably not going to follow the other Ten Commandments either, because he doesn't have the love of God. Okay? Um, if he is not concerned about the Fourth Commandment, why would he be concerned about the other ones? And this is why all the Ten Commandments are together. They are like pomegranates stranded all together. Because if you just take one of those pomegranates out, the whole chain falls off. Love is the rod that keeps all the commandments together. So, we're going to talk about the first commandment. And this commandment says, Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. Now, anything can be considered a god. Okay? Um, a god is someone who you obey every c commandment to. Uh, you know, the person whom you obey in every matter is your god. Okay, so... um. Let me just point this out. No person should ever be your God. Um, there's a difference between the first and the second commandments. But I believe that the first commandment is referring to people. And the second commandment is referring to material objects. So no person should be your God. Even though they were made in the image and likeness of God. They are not your God. Your parents are not your God. Your spouse is not your God. The government is not your God. The president is not your God. No one else is. So this is a danger when you obey every command that a person gives you. Okay? Because there will come a time where you have to face between God and man. The person just told you to do something that violates one of the Ten Commandments, and then you have a choice whether to obey that person or not. If you do obey that person, you made him a god. If you do not, then you are observing the one true God. And this is the difference here. So this first commandment is an introduction to all of the other Ten Commandments, which I will talk about later on. We're going to talk about this in the other nine sermons. But let me ask you this question. When someone mentions God, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? An old man's face? You see, that is the way I used to, th to think about God. I would picture an old man's face with a straight mouth. And a large one. Huge. But there were some mistakes about that. Because first of all. We do not know how God looks like. And if you're going to picture God as a serious old man. This is why you cannot picture God. Because he is invisible. Um, God is full of love. So I guess the picture of God is something beautiful, actually. Nature is, so I guess that when you picture God, He is something beautiful, okay? Um, so, the, the next time you picture God, picture something beautiful, okay? I am out of time for today, folks, and I will see you later. Come back next time for... Uh, the second commandment. In the meantime, see you later.